Welcome to KQEG and Seven Rivers Sports. I'm your host, Terry Erickson. He's please an inside look into sports, wellness, and into fitness. Well, I am often asked, Terry, how do you determine the guests on your show? Well, I'll reveal that to you now. One, referrals. Two, uh, I read media reports and so on and profiles, and we look at that. And three, uh, the games that we cover. Some of those games, some of the athletes stand out. And I want to just share with you that uh, we worked a game, Aquinas and Melrose Mandoro, recently at Lee Gilbert Field. And Rick Wilson and I came away so impressed with Melrose Mandoro's baseball team, even though Aquinas won, that I said to Rick, there are two players that stand out in this game, and, and they happen to be my guests this week. From Melrose Mindoro, Eli Miller and Bryson Gash. Welcome to the show, guys. Thanks for having us. Thanks. You didn't know that I was that impressed, did you guys? Nope. Not really. Well, you were my players of the game, along with the blue goal players. But you know, it's often been said that the journey and the pursuit of following your dream starts at a very young age. And somebody inspires you when you're young. You get involved in sports. And then the journey just takes off from there. Let's go back down the yellow brick road with you, Bryson, and how you got involved with sports when you were young. Well, both my parents grew up like pure athletes, always playing sports. So I guess it was kind of just passed on to me. Um, right, I mean, right, out, right when I was born, um, I, they had me immediately playing sports. and. My dad had played, he was a three-sport athlete his whole life, and it was just more of a, like, almost like a tradition, you know, passing it on to me and just kind of following in his footsteps. I presume, Eli, you're a gifted athlete, too. We're going to talk about all of that with both of you, but you started at a young age. Yep, I've always played baseball. I used to wrestle always, football. I played, I started t-ball right, right away when I could. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you, and you grew up in Melrose? Yep. And um, Bryson, we talked before we went on the air that you uh, didn't grow up there. You, 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 were, you were born in that area, but you let, then you left and came back. Yeah, it was a lot of adapting. So um, my hometown was Black River Falls. You know, I was very used to that, and it was pretty hard to move uh, at such a young age. But going up to a town like Milwaukee, um, having to adapt, a whole new team, a whole new environment, it was just... It was a good experience for me because then it was a lot easier for me to adapt with the constant moving, when it, even when it came to sports. You know, we're on the tail end of COVID, and that pandemic has created a lot of mental health issues, a, a lot of setbacks, a lot of anxiety. Uh, people have um, sort of rethought their life. Uh, they, uh, you lost part of your junior year, part of your senior year. Important things in your life, uh, you it was on pause and it was a difficult time how did you handle that Bryson well the year that we got off I took a lot of time in the off season where when it should have been in season to just work on my game and make sure I'm not you know falling a step back and um, unfortunately both of the seasons the Legion and school ball both were canceled that year so just making sure I made the most of every moment and making sure I didn't lose any of the progress I'd made throughout my life so far when you reflect on uh, losing part of your high school years and, and, and sports, and you reflect on that, was, was there any, was there a life lesson? Did you take something away from that, Eli? From sports? From, uh, from that sport. Oh, yeah, it's, you just got to, I took away that you got to keep, keep on going even though it's not always the easiest. You just got to keep working hard even though you're not really working for anything at that point. But then we ended up using, our, we actually got to play our senior year, so it all worked out. Again, I, uh, I noticed when Mel Rosendorf played Aquinas, uh, I was so impressed with both of you. Looking at uh, you, Eli, your stats in your senior year, you batted almost 400. You, uh, you had 31 hits, you had 17 RBIs, second team all-conference. You had a good season. Reflect on that. Well, I just try to show up to all the extra stuff and come to all the extra practices, do all the batting practices, and just keep keep on working hard and trying to continue getting better each day. Did you feel that you reached your potential your senior year? I thought I had a good year. I mean, I definitely think if we would have had our junior year and like some of that stuff like Legion and stuff, I probably could have 
been a little bit or get, gotten better even like I could have gotten better each each time we got, did something new but football wrestling baseball your favorite football probably so you excelled in football football was my favorite yeah, I enjoyed it the most but talk about that well I just like the how close the team is in football and like how much extra stuff you get to do how many practices how long the practices are and just you have to put in a lot of extra work for football and I like that and you have a wrestling build yeah, I only wrestled the freshman year, but that I, then I broke my ankle sophomore year in, in football, so then I decided to take a year off from wrestling and never went back. But So the wrestling coaches are probably pretty upset that you did not continue. Yeah, they, they, they wanted me to keep going, but I don't know. I decided it wasn't my thing. Two sports was enough for Bryson. Looking at your average, uh, by the way, you were the player of the game. You were on the mound against Aquinas, and I was like, this guy can play college baseball. So, 347 average, 25 hits, seven doubles, two home runs. Two home runs, that's pretty impressive. 19 RBIs, you pitched 31 innings with a 3-1 and one record. Go back to just that game for a minute against the mighty blue goals from Aquinas, and you were on the hill. Nervous? Um, I think a lot of what took the nerves away from me is that Throughout the year, even though we didn't have last year, me and Eli were able to build a lot more of like a pitcher-catcher bond. So by that time in the year, we were very comfortable with each other and knowing like how we were going to manage through the games. So there wasn't really any moments where we didn't know like what to do in any situation. So I, I felt pretty comfortable. First inning was where most of the nerves got shaken off, but after that, it was just a normal game. Damian Miller is a friend of mine who caught for the Brewers and Yankees and Diamondbacks and so on. He's from uh, West Salem. You probably know that. One of the most famous baseball players ever in the lacrosse area. Played at Viterbo. He talked about the synergy and, the, uh, uh, and, and some of the pitchers he liked that he worked with, uh, some he didn't, and it was a special bond that he had with some of the pitchers that he caught. Did you guys have similar feelings? As to like the correlation to what he's like with the pitcher catcher bond uh, in the game, mm -hmm. so I think that like it's a lot easier to manage your way through a game when you're on the same page. Because if 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 we're not both competing every pitch and trying to trying to work for what we're trying to get towards every pitch, then the game's gonna fall apart quicker than we'd want to. Especially when you can't make as many mistakes against a team like um, the Blue Golds. So we gotta just try to be on our A game for as you know all seven innings. And unfortunately, we weren't able to, to do that for the whole seven innings against them, but I think we, we played pretty well. Oh, you did? Talk about the strategy, though, Eli, if you could, about catching and reading, um, reading the, the body language and the frustration level or whatever from the pitcher, uh, batters and placing the ball and so on. I just try, I mean, I, I usually leave it up to Brace and what he wants to throw, and I just try to always listen to what he wants because I know that's going to be what he's going to be most, like, each, any pitcher is going to be most comfortable with what they want to throw. So I always try to just let them decide. And there's not many times where I, like, force them to throw something or do something that they don't want to do. So you, you, it's compatible. You talk to each other and you have a feel for what, uh, and you rely on uh, your pitcher to determine what to throw. Yep. So I just, and so if you if you think you you a, a certain pitch should be thrown and you give us a, a sign and he shakes it off like do you get frustrated sometimes like I I think you should throw this and the pitcher wants to throw something else not not usually I mean maybe a couple times but usually I'm pretty okay with it because I know they're gonna be most comfortable and probably throw that pitch the best that they want to throw is that right Bryce and you know a little bit more than the catcher I mean there were quite a bit of shake offs throughout the year it was more of it wasn't more of disagreeing with what he wanted, but a lot of it is just like the game of chess with the batter. And if they if they don't know what's coming, that's the best scenario for us. So we just try to get in their heads as much as we can while staying in rhythm, and it usually works. Well, you're, you're both students first, athletes second. You both uh, have gotten some success, uh, uh, academic success. Is that something that is driven at home, Bryson. Student first, athlete second. Yeah, um, my parents always pre preach to not only work as hard as you can on the field, but also in the classroom, and it's uh, kind of like the uh, the multitasking with being able to stay on top of not just your athletic lifestyle, but also your academic lifestyle, and making sure that you're 
as responsible as you need to be, especially with college coming out? Well, Bryson, you were a multi-sport athlete, for quarterback and you know basketball. I remember watching you play. Uh, was it hard to uh, to balance the sports and getting good grades too? I don't think I don't know if I would say it was um, incredibly hard. Our coaches did a really good job of um, all three coaches did a good job of making sure that we were um, students first and that we were getting stuff done in the classroom. And if we weren't performing in the classroom, then we weren't able to practice that day. They make sure that that we're able to we have we have to make sure that we get good grades. And as long as we do so, we're able to continue our athletic lifestyle, especially at school. Certainly a, uh, a priority for you too, Eli. Yep, I always, my parents always wanted me to keep my grades up and stuff, and I always tried to just keep keep doing what I had to do to get good grades. And but, did you have a favorite subject? My favorite subject, I I used to like math, but now towards the end I was turning to just like, more like uh, like ecology and stuff like that. And math came easy for you? It used to, not anymore. When I was younger it did. <laughs> then it just got too yep, difficult. Then it started getting harder and I was now it's now it's more like ecology and I like like those kind of classes like science classes. I've had some guests that's like, you know, Terry, my favorite class is PE. And I said, well, I don't, you know, that's probably a, that's probably a good choice in terms of favorite, but you need to be challenged academically too. Were you challenged, Bryson? Yeah, um, same as you. I used to lot, like math a lot more when it was just numbers, but. As it gets into the higher high school and like the, the AP stuff, it's it's pretty confusing. But I like I still like math the most just because it is the most challenging and it's one you really have to like stay focused on, especially in high school and college. Life is about accepting challenges and then uh, doing as well as you can, like you did at uh, Melrose Mandoro. And that's why you're on the show, but we need to take a break. So we'll do that. And for these messages, we'll be right back. More here on Seven River Sports. When you're faced with the decision of selecting a monument to honor someone dear to you, call Lewiston Monuments for a no-obligation consultation. Lewiston Monument is a full-service monument company, serving families in Iowa, Minnesota, and Wisconsin for over four generations. You'll find beautiful granite, marble, and bronze memorials all at competitive prices. Their experts can help you design the perfect and unique memorial. Lewiston Monument. Call today or on the web at lewistonmonument.com. You know, the thing I'm most proud of when I think about our company is the reputation that we've been able to build in this community. Our technicians have done a great job going out and performing magnificent jobs for the customer. And our customers have rewarded us with some really great reviews online. We have over 150 five-star reviews online right now. Our technicians do a great job out there and our reviews show it. We can say without hesitation, when you choose Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning, you'll be glad you did. Welcome back to Seven River Sports. Special guests this week, Eli Miller and Bryson Gash from Melrose Mindoro. Just like that, your high school years end. Went by awful fast, didn't it, guys? Mm -hmm. Reflect back, Bryson, on your high school years. Defining moments, regrets, special takeaways. Um, I wouldn't say that there was, you know, one defining moment for our team. I think for our team, it was really, we had a really young team. It was more of a building process, a lot of sophomores. Um, once you reach that fifth spot in the order, it's a lot of young guys, and it's more of you know, getting the entire team to believe in something and you know, work together as a, as a team, more so than individually, and getting everyone to believe that you know, each night we play that we can win the game, regardless of you know, our setbacks or um, what happens you know, during the game. Any, any regrets when you think back uh, to your high school years and um, things that maybe you wanted to accomplish that you didn't, Eli? Um, some things that I think I would have, I should have done, maybe just a few more camps, just some 
some more extra things I could have done. Maybe f try to find a winter sport, like something, something to do in the winter, other than like just lifting and stuff like that. You know, your coach, uh, who's I've sort of reconnected with Coach Turner because he grew up playing at the club when he was very young. Um, he had a quote about you, and I want you to react to this, starting with Eli. Eli caught part of every game, never asked to take a break, even in practice. Unusual. Um, if I had a, to use a phrase to explain Eli's work ethic, it would be, no, I'm good, in reference to him taking, not taking any time off. I'm good, coach. I don't need a break. Is that you? Yeah, that's usually what I what I did. I, I never really asked, or I never really had anyone go in my place, and I never I just I just kept going. It didn't really bother me too much. So you've always had that kind of work ethic. I think so. I mean, maybe it's gotten a little better over the years, but I think it's it's definitely better now. Bryson Gash didn't play on the varsity as a sophomore. You were like pretty disappointed, but coach. Turner goes on to say, uh, he, Bryson's way of accepting not being on the varsity as a sophomore was when he asked me what he needed to do, what you needed to do to improve and be on the varsity as a junior. And then you played Legion Black River and fall ball and you learned to play outfield and pitching. So you sort of, you you accepted the fact that maybe you weren't at the level that you should have been, and you, your work, uh, your approach to getting better made you what you are. Now, that's what Coach says about you. That's, that's impressive. Um, I think that, I mean, I think in my, in my head, I thought that sophomore year I was good enough, but it was also a very, you know, senior-based team at that time, a lot of seniors on the team, so... At that point, I really couldn't do anything to change that other than work as hard as I could in the off season and any time I got during practice to make sure that I got where I needed to be by the next year when it was when I got my opportunity to to be a big part of the team and then uh, a lot of guys, you know, besides just me and Eli, were able to step up this year and really help us have a, a really good put together team. In fact, Coach Turner told me in his three years of coaching at Melrose Mindoro the group of seniors which you were a part of uh, amazed him and uh, when you found out that you could practice when the school district allowed you to resume practice um, he would get texts from you and others uh, in, in wanting to begin practice so you were you had an appetite for uh, growth and an appetite for competitiveness that's impressive yeah I think that missing a year kind of humbled all of us and I mean it kind of made us have to be patient but it made us want to play this year even more and it made us, it was just it was very relieving to be able to hear that we were going to be able to have a season after not being able to have one last year and then I think we made the most of it this year and did everything we could to be as successful as we were. Well you're 14 and 6 and you made you, you got to the second round of the playoffs certainly um, what's next for Eli? For me I'm going to Western Technical College and right now I'm just working for my dad at ACT Concrete, but I'm not really f positive what's, what's after college yet, but. Take over the concrete business? I'm not sure yet. I, I haven't thought that far ahead yet. <laughs> I'm just gonna see what happens. You indicated in your profile, Eli, that uh, your role models your family. Yeah, I definitely say like my parents are a big part of like what I've become and what I've done over like high school years for sports and extra things. And uh, with Bryson, you're going to continue your baseball at the next level, aren't you? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, it's, I'm just happy to be able to you know, have that opportunity to be able to, to say the journey's not quite over yet, but um, I, I'm really excited to be able to get to the point where having you know, pitching coaches, being able to extend my game, and being able to just you know, become the best player that I can uh, through hopefully the next four years that I get at Eau Claire. At Eau Claire. Well, there's a good program at UW Lacrosse too. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I was fortunate enough to, uh, very late in the recruiting process to be able to get recruited during one of our games uh, against Emmanuel. So I just make the most of it and 
I don't know what's after that, but hopefully I get a good four years of baseball in and, you know, yielding any injuries, hopefully not. Well, in case it doesn't work out at Eau Claire, case, you have Baturbo, you have Western Technical College, you have UW Lacrosse, you can come back. Keep that in mind. All right. <laughs> so, four years at a, at, at a higher institution, where is that going to take you? Um, I think that, you know, as far as baseball takes me, it will be, you know, it will be a fun ride regardless of how far that takes me. But in terms of the ap academic lifestyle for college, I'm hoping to, to go uh, continue my major in business and finance like my dad. And I think uh, for if baseball doesn't work out, then that, that would be my, my backup plan. And you indicated, too, that you might want, want to go into sports broadcasting. So yeah. In other words, you might want to take over this show someday then? or. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I've always liked, you know, watching sports, playing sports, and uh, I've just always had a love for just watching sports, being able to not necessarily broadcast in front of people, even though that'd be a dream, that just to be able to watch what I love and talk about what I love would be a dream job as well. Role models? Um, obviously, like I was talking about before, my dad, but uh, in terms of athletes, I'd say... Ryan Braun, Ruff Harf. Really? Yeah. You, we talked about coaches a little while ago, too, and uh, your coach, Turner. If, what, what, what makes a successful coach? Who are the kinds of coaches you like to play for, Bryson? So Coach, coach Turner specifically had this belief in all of us, and he was just, he, he motivated us to, you know, be able to understand that we can we can do anything that we put our mind to in terms of playing games against whether it be conference out of conference. He was just able to, you know, not only be there on the field, but if you had a question outside of the field, you know, he was he was not just your coach but your friend, and he was a, a huge helping hand and a huge part of how good we were this year. Eli, you've played for a lot of coaches too. Yeah, I I, I think the, what makes a successful coach would be like ones that put in the extra work, the extra time to do stuff with the team, not only just sports-wise, but like help them out if they need help or have just extra things that can get the team together and build some like like team bonds. You're a leader. Uh, it, it came naturally to you somewhat, both of you. Uh, a senior leader, multi-sport athlete, academically. Uh, describe leadership. I would say leadership is just somebody that tries to better everyone around them, not just themselves. Just keep keeps like everyone moving forward and just always pushing everyone to be better. Philosophy of life for an eighteen year old just graduated young man, what is that? I would say just to try to make make the best of every moment and just try to just have fun always. Have you done that? Made the best of the moment? I've tried, yeah. I'm trying to. <laughs> you're a leader, too. I mean, it comes naturally. You're a pitcher. You, uh, I'm not sure if you were always a leader, but I could tell, Bryson, you were a leader the day I watched you play. Yeah. Um, I mean, again, with the young team that we had, we really needed seniors like me and Eli and um, Tucker on our team, you know, just people to step up and really be a... Uh, role models for the team not only on the field but off the field and just being able to make sure that you know they all believed in what we believed in to make us I mean you know baseballs can be very temporary and just to have everyone enjoy it during the time they get it especially in high school so and you really the only disappointment perhaps both of you have is the fact that it's in a New York minute your high school days are over with you and, and, and your good friends sort of going you go in different directions is that hard to Except, yeah, because um, high school baseball is very unique. You get to to play baseball alongside people that you grew up with. So regardless if you play at the next level or not, that aspect of it is gone. And you know you kind of treasure the friendship that you had while playing it. Just don't really realize how quick it goes. But just being able to enjoy every every moment of high school baseball with your friends is pretty special. That's your philosophy of life too, somewhat. Yeah, just you know you never know what's gonna happen. You know, treat every game like game seven and. Make sure that you're always on top of your game and going as hard as you can until it's over. Lots of young people watch this show. Elementary school, middle school. Someday they want to be an Eli Miller. Someday they want to be a Brian Gash, Bryson Gash. How do they get there, Bryson? Just don't take your eyes off what you want to be and just 
you know, be working when other people aren't, whether it's in season, off season, do, doing whatever you can, whether you're a pitcher or a position player, just constantly working on your craft and making sure that you don't take any time off when others do just to, to get to wherever you want to be, whether it's high school ball or beyond that, just being a leader on your team. Eli? Uh, just find what you like, like doing and try to make yourself the best you can at it and just keep, keep working towards your goals and make goals in the first place and just to keep, just keep working and getting you, better. You reached all your goals? I don't think I reached all my goals, but I've reached a few. I've, I've worked towards a few goals. Sadness when that last game ended, wasn't it? Yep. It was, it was definitely sad for everyone, especially our se the seniors, because that was the last time a lot of us will, 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 will ever play a game together. When I introduced myself to you, Bryson, you didn't even know who I was. It's, it's okay. <laughs> but I could tell sadness in your eyes. Yeah, I mean, you know, we never got ourselves used to losing. We never really went on a, a losing skid during the year. It was, I guess it was something to, to get used to and something that we kind of had to deal with. But, you know, we all, we all got through it. We kind of looked back and realized that, you know, we, we really did have a good year together, especially with how young of a team we had, and that we made the most of every moment we got and that, you know, even though it didn't work out at the end, that it was it was well worth it for all of us. You made the most of this moment being on the show, and I said at the beginning as we close, um, we like to have guests that really appreciate the fact that there's an opportunity for them to be on a show, and you guys demonstrated that, uh, and so we appreciate having Bryson Gash and Eli Miller on the show. Thanks for coming again. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll be back with some closing thoughts right after this. With our busy lives, it's a comfort to know that we can still remember loved ones in a traditional way with a monument. Lewiston Monuments in Lewiston, Minnesota has been helping families purchase a monument for over four generations. You'll find a large selection of beautiful granite, marble, and bronze monuments all at competitive prices. And they're a full service company, so they also do straightening, cleaning, and repair of monuments. Stop in or call for a no obligation consultation or visit lewistonmonument.com for more information. You know, the thing I'm most proud of when I think about our company is the reputation that we've been able to build in this community. Our technicians have done a great job going out and performing magnificent jobs for the customer. And our customers have rewarded us with some really great reviews online. We have over 150 five-star reviews online right now. Our technicians do a great job out there and our reviews show it. We can say without hesitation, when you choose Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning, you'll be glad you did. Welcome back to Seven River Sports. I hope you enjoyed this week's interview. Bryson Gash and Eli Miller, student athletes from Melrose Mindoro High School. Well, Seven River Sports will continue and we are looking to broaden our list of guests along with topics to cover. If you have a thought, please contact us here at the studio. Join us for Nights of Thunder Racing every Thursday and every Sunday evening at 7 p.m. Thanks for joining us this week. Next week, a big interview as we introduce you to a track and field high school state champion from Aquinas High School, Lucas Beck. I know you will enjoy that interview. Until next week, I'm your host, Terry Erickson, hoping that you will have an active and a healthy week ahead.